Hi folks! Have you encountered this kind of aquatic vertebrate animal? Yes, you see it right. It's the betta fish, also known as a Siamese fighting fish. Whether you're a pro or a beginner hobbyist of this fish, I bet that you'll agree that its behavior can be confusing at times. But when should you start taking action when it displays what you think is just normal behavior? You better stay now, cause in today's video, I'll be breaking down the 12 reasons why the betta fish start laying on bottom of tanks. Welcome back to Aquarium Store Depot. Seeing a betta fish lying on the bottom of a tank is an alarming experience for a fish keeper. Actually, no matter what kind of fish you have, you never want to see it laying on its side at the bottom of the tank. Because prolonged laying on the substrate can eventually cause secondary infections to form due to new scrapes and scratches as well as torn fins, and betta fish are prone to developing fin rot. Unfortunately, seeing a betta fish laying on the bottom of a tank is a common sight in commercial pet stores. This can fool beginner hobbyists into thinking that it's the natural behavior of their fish, but this is not normal at all. Yet, you should not be worried because despite the existence of the most common telltale signs that something is wrong in the betta's environment, here are some ways and how you can make sure to keep your betta fish happy and healthy. First is knowing the tank size. It's a common misconception that betta fish don't need a lot of space. While this is mostly true, they definitely flourish when given the space to thrive. Betta fish are commonly kept in one gallon betta tanks that haven't undergone the nitrogen cycle. But in general, betta fish need at least a 5 gallon fully cycled and heated aquarium. Hobbyists may add live plants and appropriate tank mates while keeping up water quality and keeping the betta enriched. Trying to keep these beautiful fish in smaller setups is only recommended for more experienced betta keepers. The water parameters are next. Betta fish need a fully cycled and heated aquarium. Commonly, they are thrown into an uncycled tank where they are left to succumb to ammonia poisoning or other water quality problems. But keeping water parameters right for betta fish is easy. Betta fish need 0 ppm ammonia, 0 ppm nitrite, and minimal nitrite at all times. Excess levels of these parameters can cause the betta's health to deteriorate and in some cases, lead to death. Since betta fish originate from very acidic conditions in Southeast Asia, with pH levels under 7.0, and local pet stores have adapted to a relatively neutral pH between 6.0 and 8.0, stability should be considered. It is also a tropical species that needs an aquarium heater to keep the water temperature between 78 and 80 degrees Fahrenheit instead of the ambient room temperature. Finally, there are tank mates. Yes, it's possible to keep other fish with your betta fish. However, this will largely depend on the personality of the individual fish. While others may accept all new tank additions, some betta fish might not tolerate other fish or invertebrates in their aquarium at all. Still, there are several tried and true species that have made perfect betta fish tank mates. These include Corridoras, small tetras like neon, cardinal, and ember tetras, guppies, coolie loaches, shrimps, and snails. If you're keeping female betta fish, starting a betta fish sorority tank is a more advanced setup. Before we get into the 12 reasons why betta fish are laying on the bottom of their tanks, make sure that you like this video, hit the subscribe button, and turn on the bell notification for more aquarium related topics on your subscription feed. Going back to our next topic, it's pretty normal for your betta fish to be laying on the ground when it's sleeping. Otherwise, there must be a problem with the tank, water quality, or you're dealing with an illness. Let's now dive into the ways to identify the problem and what to do to get your betta fish feeding awesome. Sleeping betta fish is ranked first on our list. Though it's not in the same way other animals do, betta fish do take some sleep. They have brief sleep cycles when they enter the REM stage throughout the night. Since it doesn't have the ability to lie down, it doesn't mean that it's sick due to abnormal behavior, but usually it's just your baby trying to get some shut-eye. 
One way to tell that your fish are sleeping is when they have a preferred spot to rest once the lights turn off. From that, they will then lightly fold near the object, sometimes in weird orientations, and might even appear to stop swimming altogether. Other bettas might enjoy laying on the substrate as well, but it can be concerning when you see your fish at the bottom of the tank starting to fall sideways. Also, if it's happening during the day or you notice abrasions or rip fins starting to form, then this can be a more serious issue. Older betta fish can be one of the reasons. Just like you and me, betta fish get weaker as they age. They might not be able to swim in a straight line from the top of the aquarium to the bottom of the tank while resting on a leaf or aquarium equipment. If your betta fish is especially exhausted, it may start taking a quick break at the bottom of the tank. Unfortunately, all betta ages. So, always monitor your fish for cuts or scrapes and give your fish the best possible day it deserves. The third reason could be ammonia poisoning. If the previous factors don't apply, then there is more likely something wrong with the tank or with the water conditions. And one of the leading causes is ammonia poisoning. Ammonia is a natural compound in the aquarium. Fish and invertebrates constantly create waste that is then processed by beneficial bacteria populations. The highest that ammonia level should ever go is when the tank is cycling. It should remain close to 0.0 ppm at all other times. But what happens if you add too many fish or feed them too much at one time? You may experience a mini cycle where ammonia levels increase, causing an imbalance in bacteria populations. Since ammonia is a deadly chemical, any significant amount will burn their gills, making them unable to breathe, thus causing injury to the external and internal organs of a fish. However, water changes, water conditioners, and ammonia-reducing filter media may help bring down the ammonia levels just in time. The fourth reason is nitrate poisoning. If you experience a mini-cycle, then it's likely you'll get a large influx of nitrates as well. When ammonia enters the aquarium water, it is converted from ammonia into nitrite and finally into nitrate. This poisoning will quickly lead to poor health in your betta. One of the more severe symptoms is if the betta fish lays on the bottom of the tank. Unlike the others, nitrates can only be quickly removed from the aquarium with a water change. This is why it's recommended to do a near 100% water change after a better tank has finished cycling. Luckily, nitrate poisoning only occurs when there are very high levels of nitrate in the aquarium water making it important to regularly perform water changes and test water parameters. Fifth on our list is swim bladder disorder. The swim bladder is responsible for regulating a fish buoyancy in the water column. Symptoms include difficulty maintaining an upright position, bloatedness, a curved back, and sinking or floating to the top of the water. This disorder isn't entirely understood though it's believed to be a secondary symptom of a more major problem, like water quality or just another illness. One of the ways betta might also be affected is through the intake of too much oxygen while eating food at the water surface. The main treatments for swim bladder disorder are increasing water quality through water changes, changing diets, and possible medication. The sixth reason is a small aquarium. Who wants a small space to live in, right? Betta fish are notorious for being kept in poor conditions due to being a beginner's fish. Not only does an overly small aquarium stress out betta fish, but less water volume can lead to fluctuating water parameters, causing them to lie on the bottom of their tank. A 5 gallon fully cycled aquarium is usually the bare minimum recommended. This gives the fish enough space to freely swim while providing an interactive environment to keep your betta from getting bored. A bigger aquarium also means that water parameters aren't affected as quickly or as much should a problem arise in the system, which leads to a healthier betta. Going on to our seventh reason, the temperature. One of those affected water parameters could be water temperature. Betta fish are very hardy fish in all regards, but they're tropical fish that need a constant water temperature between 78 and 80 degrees Fahrenheit. 
Unfortunately, these fish are often kept in unheated aquariums with fluctuating temperatures, causing the fish to go into shock. The inability of your betta fish to physiologically adjust to its environment can quickly lead to a lethargic and dying betta. Our eighth reason is incorrect pH. You heard that correctly. Possibly even worse than a wrong water temperature is a wrong pH. In the wild, betta fish live in slightly acidic water conditions due to tannins that enter the water column when organics start to break down. Since they've been bred in the freshwater aquarium for a long time, most betta fish are able to adapt to a more neutral pH, near 7.0. Most aquarium keepers keep the pH of their betta tanks between 6.0 and 8.0. The problem is that pH is measured on a logarithmic scale that makes differences in numbers an exponential change. What might seem like a slight change in pH is actually much greater than it might read. That being said, it's normal for aquariums to experience changes in pH throughout the day. However, if pH changes more than 0.5 per day, this can be stressful enough and even deadly for the betta fish. So folks, be aware. Number 9 is concerned with filtration issues. In addition to a heater, betta fish also require a filter that is properly sized for a betta tank. Finding a properly fitted betta fish filter is not so easy. It needs to be rated for at least 5 gallons, but can't be so strong that it pushes your fish across the tank. This is a common problem for betta keepers, a good quality filter that has too much water flow. If filters fail to provide enough surface area for beneficial bacteria populations, it can lead to poor water quality, which can greatly affect bettas. The solution to both these problems is to use an aquarium filter that can keep up with the bioload of the system by modifying or baffling the water flow. Some hobbyists even turn to a sponge filter instead of a hang on the back system so that the flow isn't as overwhelming. Innovative, wasn't it? The tenth reason is poor diet. Who would have thought that fish suffer poor diets too? In the wild, betta fish have a wide assortment of plants, algae, insects, and detritus to choose from to eat. While this can surely be replicated in the aquarium setting, a high quality fish flake or pellet can usually meet the nutritional needs that bettas need to thrive. A low quality food, or one designed for another species, may not provide all of the vitamins and nutrients your fish need to perform daily tasks, such as swimming, and can cause indigestion problems, such as constipation. Irregular feedings and lack of feeding can also cause fish to become weak and malnourished. So everyone, start feeding your bettas now! The next reason could be a lack of interaction. As mentioned before, bettas can become bored in their environments, especially in a very small tank where there isn't much to do, causing it to sink at the bottom of the tank, waiting for something new to enter its home. Though betta fish are solitary fish, they require enrichment. As an owner, you can add invertebrate tank mates, live feedings, or the addition of live plants to give your betta fish just enough change in their environment so they don't become bored. Even though fish aren't the most intelligent animals, they still appreciate being visited by their owners every day. Just observe how your betta fish reacts the next time you approach this tank. The poor tank mates are the last but not the least in our list. At the same time, you don't want to add tank mates that will cause your fish to become stressed out from being overactive. Larger, aggressive fish may even chase your betta and exhaust it, causing it to get injured and lie on the substrate. There are plenty of betta fish tank mate options that have proven to be successful, but many pairings are not. Success will also greatly depend on the personality and behavior of the individual betta fish, as not all may be as welcoming as other fish. No matter how tempting and fearless a betta fish can appear, it can succumb to a variety of water parameter problems and illnesses relatively quickly. So folks, if you find your betta fish laying at the bottom of the tank, then check the water parameters immediately and check for signs of disease. If there are no signs of a problem with either, then your fish just might be sleeping or getting older like a living creature does. Whether you're interested in keeping a betta fish in your aquarium 
or just want to gain new insights regarding fishes of different kinds, I hope that you find this detailed video helpful. Drop your thoughts and share your experiences in the comment section down below. It may be overwhelming to absorb such information, but the knowledge you get from today's video will definitely make you a better hobbyist for your betta fish. If you like this video, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, Aquarium Store Depot, where we upload videos on different topics related to aquariums to better help you be an effective fish keeper. Don't forget to turn on the notification bell to be updated with our newly released videos. Till our next aquarium topic, thanks for watching!